Lots of people picked up on the, uh, the Tony reference from last time, which is fantastic. His Camera Conspiracies is a wonderful, wonderful camera channel. It's good to see somebody talking about tech with a sense of humor because a lot of like tech talk is so humorless, but not even that, it's so earnest. And I think what I like about Camera Conspiracies is that <laughs> it's just like, this is all ridiculous, which is kind of what it, it, it is really. But even the hi-fi boxes, right? <laughs> yes, you can do the finger thing. I do. Our first story this week comes from Cambridge Audio, who have announced firmware updates for their Edge NQ streamer, the CXN V2, and the 851N, plus a couple of other older models. Now this firmware update brings Tidal Connect to those streamers. Now Tidal Connect, as you might have guessed, is basically like Spotify Connect, but for Tidal, in that you just need to use your phone or a computer app to select the Cambridge streamer as an output device, and then the stream goes not to your phone, but to that streamer. I've got a CXN V2 set up behind me in my lounge, and I installed the latest firmware update to just to check out Tidal Connect on Cambridge Audio hardware. And I discovered something that is not in the press release, which I really think should have been, because many people subscribing to Tidal do so for access to the MQA masters. It's basically Tidal's high-res library. Now, because there is no MQA full decoder support inside any Cambridge Audio streamer at the moment, it means that when you punch in an MQA stream using Tidal Connect on Cambridge Audio hardware using this new firmware update, you don't get MQA. The stream cuts back to 1644.1 CD quality. Now, I think it's fantastic that Cambridge Audio are not only just looking after customers of one-year-old, two-year-old streamers, but also streamers that go back further that are no longer available. This is awesome. Adding extra functionality is fantastic. But I think Tidal Connect and MQA Masters tend to go hand in hand for this kind of audience. And if you want a Cambridge Audio product that does do MQA, their very first one, you'll need to look at the DAC Magic 200M. I will be reviewing that in about a month or so. I've just bought one with the Patreon funds because my Patreon give me a budget to go out and buy gear and then give it back to that community once the review is done. So I'll be doing that. But I mentioned this sort of Tidal Connect issue because it's a good example of how wrinkles can often pop up when we're talking about access to high-res audio. And our next story is another example of such a wrinkle. Sonos and Kobos jointly announced this week that Sonos hardware would now be passing high-res audio from Kobos' service using their app. So you can now access high-res content, 24-bit high-res content, that's the headline splash. You can now access 24-bit high-res content using Kobos inside the S2 app. Now the first wrinkle relates to the Sonos hardware. This update only relates to S2 Sonos hardware and the, the latest iterations of the S2. So you'll need to check Sonos' website, I'll put a link below for the exact details of which hardware supports high-res audio and Kobus. But the second wrinkle is that even if you have the latest Sonos S2 gear, the DAC inside is capped at 24-bit 48 kilohertz. So you can't stream anything higher than 24-bit 48 kilohertz using Kobos inside the Sonos S2 platform. Now, that will be an issue, I think, for people who have subscribed to Kobos explicitly for the high-res content, because when we talk about high-res content, or when audiophiles do, generally they're talking about 2496, 24192, those higher high-res levels. 
And before some of you grumpy old geezers get all like, you can't hear above 20 kilohertz, so it's all like a waste of time. It's not about the frequency range at which you can hear. It's about where audio engineers have to place the filter. So with higher res, you can put the, the filter further away from the audio band so it doesn't fold back into that audio band. But I'm not gonna get into the sort of the technical to and fro of high res audio. The point here is that with Sonos, Koba's 2448 is your ceiling. Now, yes, many, many new releases come out at 2444.1, they'll play fine, 2448. But if you try and punch in a 2496 file or a 24192 file, the Koba's server will serve you a 1644.1 Redbook CD quality file. Now we could look at this in a glass half empty kind of way and think, well, we don't get 24192, we don't get 2496, so what's the point? Fair enough, it's a fair call. Or we could look at this in a glass half full kind of way and go, well, we get a little bit more, but more importantly, we're able to get the best quality that the Sonos platform can deliver to us. Now there's another slight sort of sting in the tail here is if you've got like a Sonos Roam, I just don't see the benefit in having 24, 48 kilohertz audio streaming to it, especially if it's a monobox. And if you've got one Sonos One or one Sonos Five, again, I would question the benefits of high res audio in that context. But if you have a pair of Sonos Fives, yeah, then maybe it's worth it. But again, it's all sort of maybes, ifs, buts, what ifs, you know? And it's another example of how this week, news stories have come with a, a wrinkle for high-res audio enthusiasts. Yeah. Our third and final story this week also comes with a high-res audio related wrinkle. Now, Bang and Olofsson, Olaf was just saying you should say or what is it? How do you pronounce it? Bang and Olufsen? No. Bang and Olafsen? Anyway, Bang and Olafsen have released the BioPlay HX Active Noise Cancelling Headphones. So obviously they're Bluetooth. Now the selling point for these headphones is their battery life. Because Bang and Olufsen are promising 35 hours runtime with active noise cancelling engaged and more when it's not engaged. Now these new headphones come with an app so you can adjust them using that app. Some of the controls are available from the ear cup. Inside the ear cup is a custom in-house designed four centimeter dynamic driver. I believe it's ported so somewhere on the ear cup there'll be a, maybe a, an outlet for the base port but there'll also be holes for the microphones because obviously you need the microphones for phone calls. The point I wanna make here is that if we're gonna look at a Bluetooth active noise canceling headphone, then we really have to focus on the Bluetooth component and not the, whether it's the 4.2 or the 5.1, we have to look at the codex that the manufacturers put into the headphone. So Bang & Olufsen in their BioPlay HX, they've put SBC, because they have to, because that's part of the spec. And then they've put AAC, and they've also put adaptive Aptex for anybody with an Android phone or a MacBook maybe, or any other device that supports adaptive Aptex. Now what that means is that the stream bitrate will vary according to the strength of the signal, the Bluetooth signal. Now those kilobits per second matter. And inside the Bluetooth pipe, the connection between your phone and your headphones, that pipe is only capable of roughly 1000 kilobits per second. Now that is not enough for lossless audio, even with FLAC. CD quality needs 1411 kilobits per second. That's uncompressed. If you squash it down with FLAC, the compression can vary depending upon the complexity of the music. So sometimes it will just dip to like 1200 kilobits per second. Sometimes it will go all the way down to 700 
and then up again. And it can vary inside the track as well. But as soon as you go over 1000, obviously you can't fit that in a Bluetooth pipe. So we can't get lossless CD quality, even compressed with FLAC, over Bluetooth. And I mentioned this today because I'm still seeing people in the comments section talking about how you can get CD quality over Bluetooth. You can't. It's not in the spec yet. Now, the Bluetooth special interest group who manage the Bluetooth audio spec seem to be concentrating on other things right now. So the best quality in terms of numbers, best quality codec available to us for Bluetooth is Sony's LDAC, which can either run at 990 kilobits per second, 660, or 330, depending upon the quality of the connection, a bit like Aptex Adaptive. But notice the, the most you can get is 990. That is not enough for CD quality lossless flack. So Bluetooth can sound very good, yes. And personally, I think we gain more from a Bluetooth connection than we lose when active noise cancellation is part of the feature set. So I love the Sony noise cancelling headphones. I love the Bowers and Wilkins noise cancelling headphones. I'm sure these B&O headphones are just as good in the noise cancelling department, just like Bose. We have many, many choices, but let us not pretend for one minute that a Bluetooth audio connection is capable of CD quality. Now that also means it cannot do high res. We are seeing some manufacturers splashing this little yellow logo on their products that says high res Bluetooth but it's a bit of a trick because it's not the high res that we talk about when we talk about 2448 or 2496 or 24192. Well, it kind of is, but what they're doing, what LDAC are doing, Aptex are doing, is they're still throwing some of that information away. So yes, your Bluetooth connection with the right pair of headphones will play, it will pass a 2496 file, but in doing so, it will throw a lot of information away to get the data stream under 1000 kilobits per second. This 1000 ceiling is, is, is a rough approximation, but you have to be very careful when you're buying a pair of Bluetooth headphones, not to fall for this sort of little marketing trick that the Bluetooth manufacturers have sort of cooked up to try and convince us we're getting high res audio, because we're not. I think that's it.